What up, everybody? It is Demune, and we're back with episode three of Secret of Mana Remake. And here, uh, as you can see on the screen, we are going to have quite a bit of stuff to buy in this episode. Uh, um, we're going to have an, our next boss encounter as well, and uh, we're going to meet a new friend. So, uh, just like in the previous episode, like I talked about, we are going to go to the underground uh, area of Gaia's Novel. And then the other thing is what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to ensure that from episode to episode, you guys can see what monsters we've come across. So it's just these three right now. Um, and like we've seen on the screen earlier, we're going to have a new set of mobs, um, enemies coming through. Uh, so we will be putting a little dent into this uh, screen right here today. Uh, here we've met Luca, of course Nico. We've got Elman here. Yeah, good stuff. So Elman must be Prim's father. So it's ensuring, like, we go into that room and we at least talk to him. We get to know the guy a little bit. Stuff like that. Those those type of things are important. Alright. So, let's, uh... Let's see. On his journey, Randy joins up with a young girl named Prim. Prim is searching for her fiancé, Dyluck. The two of them continue on towards... Guy's Nightfall. Alright. So now, yeah, we've got a second character here helping us with combat. Some interesting interactions can start happening here. So the main thing that I want us to talk about with whenever we have a new character is the action grid. So when using the action grid, let's... Let me get over to her. Allies attack the same target. Attack enemies not targeted by allies. Uh, and then the attack grid that they use. So this is a little bit different from the original, uh, where there was an actual like checkerboard on the screen. So it looks like I could just have her attack whatever I'm attacking. And then the attack gauge is the level of mastery that they have with the weapon that they're using. Um, so I haven't showed you guys this yet, but basically what it is, is whenever you swing your weapon and you hold down the attack button, like this, your gauge goes up to 100, but then it charges. As you can see, level 1 is up right there. You let go of the attack button, and then you do a super attack. And this can go up exponentially with each level of mastery that you have with that weapon. So right now with my character and the sword, I only have level one mastery. Once I go see the blacksmith and level this sword up to level two, then I'm able to go up to gauge level two once I have mastered level two, which we'll see as we continue on through the story. In Prim's case, right here, uh, we can see that she doesn't have really anything on equipment wise but then we look at the weapons she's using a spiked knuckle so she's using a melee weapon as well we can give her any of the weapons that we have as so long as another character is not using it so basically we can see that rusty sword is being used by randy we can see her face her icon is up on that so Actually, I really like her using the spear, personally. I like her animations with it. I feel like she has a little bit better range, even though it is a melee weapon. Um, she doesn't have to get so down and dirty and inside of the, uh, the tussle of the melee combat with it. Plus, as you can see, it'll actually increase her attack to 14 from 12. So we're going to do that, and we'll switch her over. And now she's got, the <laughs> she's got this ridiculously big spear. She will just kind of help facilitate some extra attacks. So now we're doing a little bit more damage. As you can see, we have a new enemy we fought earlier. Uh, this is nice. So the characters will level a little bit faster. 
because this is a little bit higher level place. So these characters are getting a little bit more efficient XP than they would have leveling where Randy originally leveled. But like I said, this is a, this is a relaxing game to turn on and kind of relax, and turn your brain off, and enjoy a classic RPG. All right. So I'm just going through and I am killing everything. That's not going to be the case going forward. I just want to get Brim in a decent spot. So you kind of see the, the AI there is a little wonky. I dodged me. Oh! So he did knock me unconscious. So we did get that. So, in the original and in the remake, you can switch between the characters that you have in your party. Just with the directional pad. Because I'm using the joystick to move around. But with the directional pad, you can hit left or right. And it'll switch you between the two characters. Say you're wanting to do something specific. With Prim being so weak... It might be a good idea to kind of play with her because you can play her a little bit more defensively. Now you've seen Prim just leveled up with Spear. So now she has level one mastery with the Spear. So this is what I'm talking about whenever you can hold that attack button and you get that charge going on. So now she's holding that charge in and we're going to let loose right here. Nice little cleave attack. Not bad, not bad. Cool. All right, so we clear this area out. Got some candy. Guys, novels to the north. Kippo Village to the west, and the Kingdom of Pandora back on the eastern part of the uh, realm that we're in. So we're not going to stop there just yet. We will stop here later on, though. This is that. This town right here is actually the hometown of Dialogue. Prim's fiance. So like I said before, exploring all these areas and talking with the townspeople, you get to learn a lot about the area. And it's it's neat because then you can go and talk, I think it's either to his grandparents or his parents. I'm I can't remember which. Took a critical strike. Go down. All right, so you can kind of see there's a fork in the road here. We have four different ways that we can go. Now, the sign will tell us that the Haunted Forest is to the north and Guy's Novels to the south. If we go east right here, technically, it's just going to loop around the waterfall, and we're going to still head to Gaia's Novel. And if we go here, it's still going to head us, head us towards Gaia's Novel. So... Say we went east, it's all it's going to do is it's going to loop around and come back up through this way. So you could technically go to the Haunted Forest right now. It's very difficult at this level to get through there. Um, the enemies hit pretty hard and they have a lot of health for what we're doing damage-wise. Uh, but you could go through there. This way you can kind of make sure that you're going to keep Prim with you uh, for the rest of the way. Um, if we do go to Guy's Novel like we've been instructed to she's not going to take kindly to that and she will leave which is what we're going to do with this playthrough in particular uh just because you get like i wouldn't say it's a boss fight boss fight but it's kind of like a boss fight when you come back we need something sharp like an axe otherwise we'll never get through there's supposed to be a dwarf blacksmith in Gaia's navel. He's probably got some good weapons. Fine, we can go to Gaia's navel first. Uh, I'm not trying to spoil anything, I apologize. So we're going to go this way. We're going to take care of us. Okay, so as you can see, there's two waterfalls. They're both entrances. Um... Now, the right side is technically a shortcut to the underground village that we have here. Um, however, it's closed off. And see Nico here. Yeah, so 
this is where the convenience starts coming into play. We're quite a ways, quite far away from, you know, civilization, so to speak. Uh, so, no, we don't really need anything. But anyways, this is a shortcut, but it's closed off. Well, I wanted to show you that just so you kind of know what's on this side and what's on that side. So we are going to go onto the left side and work our way through the first part. You can kind of call it a dungeon, so to speak. Hey, this isn't the way to the witch's castle. Where are you going? Underground palace? Or never mind. Never mind means that we're going to leave and we're going to go and do what she wants to do. We are not doing that. We're going to the underground palace. You can go by yourself. I'm not going in there. So what are you going to do? Underground palace. Oh, you're stubborn. Fine. I'll find Zyluk on my own. See you around. Prim has left your party. Which is fine. Uh, I th actually, I think this is like canon as to the way it's, the way it's supposed to be. And that's one of the amazing things about this game. Is like I, I just love the fact that there were so many variables on how you could go about playing the game, especially at this at, at this stage. So we got some brand new enemies here. Don't want to take these guys lightly, especially these uh, goop guys. These these guys are a big waste of time, but. We need to kill at least one of them. Ugh. There we go. Got one. Now you're going to see, because my my hit rating or whatever else is just not very high, they have a very high amount of evade or dodge. Even though I'm swinging right on these guys. There we go. There. So... We want to make sure that our monsters are being tracked, of course. We got our Buzz B, Blat, the Kid Goblin, and the Green Drop. Good deal. So I am <laughs> not going to waste our time uh, working on those guys. However, this is some great experience. You've seen at the beginning of the video, I have a level recommendation. That's the level recommendation that I put up there to have, just to kind of show pacing. Um, and then you don't have to hit that level recommendation if you don't want to. Um, but for pacing, like I want to make sure that I am in a good spot for everything that I'm doing. Just how I like playing these games. Uh, And also, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like say that's required right off the bat. Like you need to be level eight before you tackle everything. But I want to be level eight before the end of this video, kind of thing. And these bats here, these bats do have a CC mechanic, like a crowd control is what CC would stand for. And basically, what they're trying to do is just kind of keep you in place, stun you, make you to where you can't play your character for a, a short amount of time. So I think we're working up here because we're going to try to find a lever. Yep. Right up there. We'll clear out these goblins. Alright, apparently my swing hit the lever already. Oh! Got the poison needles as well. So what this will do is it'll tick, tick you down for a couple seconds, do some damage to you, and then it wears off. Um, the idea is that you would swing your sword on that lever. You heard some noise in the background. Uh, so we'll go check what happened there. But that the that was our first trap chest. Uh, and I got poison needles, so did some damage to me. Nothing too bad. They do scale up in damage over time. So say, like, you don't want to deal with the negative effects of being poisoned or something else. That's where... We have an item called Medical Herb. With that, you can remove any kind of status cell elements that are happening to you like that. And that's across the board. 
any kind of CCs or whatever. The only thing it won't take care of is primarily like uh, if you're dead. So if you remember, there was lava down here. So what that lever did is there was water over here. And all it did was just move this down so the water could go down and cool off all that lava. Perfect. You can kind of see there's a divot right here. That's, just, that's supposed to signify that you can go down that way. There's nothing here. That can be kind of confusing. That's just a sign of the age of the game kind of thing. We're going to go up here. We are going to skip those guys. We got our kill. They're not very efficient, so we're just going to go ahead. So we got two goblins. They are guarding a treasure chest. Must be good. There's still your treasure right in front of you, man. The magic rope. Alright. Not to be confused with a whip. Punch glove. So, that chest just had... <laughs> basically, like, uh, snake and peanuts. If you open up a can and it pops out at you kind of thing. Well, this one had a punching glove in it. And just punched me in the face. Fantastic. I'm not going to go over there. Oh. Alright, so this is the CC that I was talking about. So he put a balloon on my head. Basically means I'm spacing out. Got my head in the clouds, not really thinking about anything for a short period of time. And that's what he just did to me. If I had another party member, I could use, like, a medical herb or something to get that off quickly. Otherwise, I'm rolling solo, so I just have to deal with it. Alright, some stalactites are blocking my way, so I can't go that way. Oh. Hit the lever, and that just drops. I wonder what just happened. That one had a bomb in it. Got me. Alright. So let's go back and see if there's anything that that's different. Yep. So now this platform is here. So now I have full access to be able to go up in here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back out and I'm going to grind another level. So uh, before we begin dealing with everything in there. So I'll fast forward it and get through that part really quickly. And I'll see you guys on the other side. back. I am at the level that I want it to be. We can start heading into the village itself. Alright, so we got some dwarfs hanging out here. Let's... See what's going on here. Interesting. So you can see right here, you know, just a big gigantic cave that looks like that's what they live in. can't click the sign here, but looks like a mallet coming down. Maybe a forge. Let's see. Say, hand me your sword. Ah, it's covered in rust. It'll break in no time if you leave it like this. I am Watts, the blacksmith. I'll report that for 100 GP. Yes, please. Why is this one? What 
a waste that it got rusted over. Just looking at it takes my breath away. I hope someday I can forge such a splendid sword myself. Huh? What's this? My hammer is broken. Wait. Don't tell me that's the mana sword of legend. This is phenomenal. I think the mana sword has imbued my hammer with some of its power. I'll try it out and forge a new axe for you. Come back in a little while. Nice. All right, so yeah, as you can see, now our weapon is slightly changed, and even the icon next to the character with the weapon that they're using has slightly changed as well. So let's take a look here. It is now called a rapier uh, from the Rust Sword. I wonder... Yeah, the under weapons. Yeah, so we had the Rusty Sword to begin with, and now that sword orb that we got from mantis ant uh the first boss that we fought watts takes that orb and is essentially able to level up the weapon that it corresponds with so in this case it was the sword orb turns it into the rapier and the more sword orbs we get we'll get new looking swords it's the same weapon it just turns it into a stronger version of itself this also increases its attack power, um, not necessarily anything else. So, in in the in the scheme of like, oh, your weapon art might change or whatever, that's not the case. Now, like before, like we had discussed with holding down the attack button and getting this gauge to go up, that's level one because that's what the rusty sword was able to accomplish. Now that I have the rapier. Once I do some more grinding, which is predicated on the kills, not per weapon attack or anything like that. Once I kill enough enemies with this sword being level 2 now, I'll be able to get a level 2 mastery. And so I'll get a different weapon art for that level. And that just increases over time. With more sword orbs and more, you know, weapons that you get. Yes, I talked to you earlier. Alright. There's the end right here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just save the game. Be cautious. I think I'm going to end up deleting my original run through. I don't like the sound of that. Alright, so that's the... Uh, that's the vendor that we're going to buy a bunch of mandatory required items with, but I don't want to do that just yet. Still want to explore here. Alright, so we've got two forks. Let's check out the right side first. I will do that. Step right up. That's it. This is Dwarf Village's world famous sideshow exhibit. Me? The Dwarf Elder? I'm merely an entertainer. Wanna watch the show? Entry is 50 GP. Uh, sure. <laughs> What's the point of having all this gold if I can't spend it on some entertainment? Listen to their story. You'll cry. You'll weep. 
you might even shed a few tears. This poor child has a 50,000 GP debt to pay off before they can go free. They're working here to pay it back little by little. If you have any heart at all, please help. Even a small contribution of 100 GP would be appreciated. Oh, come on now. Don't take advantage of my kind heart. Of course I'll give you 100 gold. Uh, yeah. Feeling like I just kind of got screwed over. What do you think? What's going on here? Thanks. At least we got our money back, yeah? I apologize. I didn't mean anything by it. I apologize. I didn't mean... Oh, I guess... I guess we're done here. Okay. Whoa! What? What? Something's coming! Oh. So we got ourselves another boss fight here. This is Chopkalo. So you can see he's like a pineapple evil fruit. Ooh, not good. So we can't really get to him comfortably. He's got these two vines that do follow our every move and they will poison you. So what we're gonna do here, and he's got these pumpkin bombs there we go take care of that as long as you keep on moving they can't hit you that's the idea is always have some movement going on I'm assuming you could swing on them took care of his arms. He should be relatively less difficult to deal with. Not to say that he is very difficult, but it can be a little bit of a nuisance if you're not used to what's going on with the mechanics. This is another instance where I think the original with the art and the animations was just a lot better. This guy, to me, was very iconic when I first played the game. His movements, his animations, and stuff like that, and the face, the facial expressions he would make with the pixel art, I thought was really fantastic for its time. This this game's not doing it very... <laughs> a lot of justice, sadly. But yeah, once you take out those arms, this is basically just a swing. Tank and spank. Can't hit him once he's inside of his uh, pineapple cocoon or whatever. There we go. Got him.
way to go. Obtained spear orb. Perfect. Thank you very much. I could have handled those guys myself, you know. Hush. Sorry about that. The shock from getting washed away affected this child's memories. They can't remember anything. They're a good child. Just with a few attitude problems and a loud mouth. Yeah, well, it'll all work out eventually. Why rush it? Tropicalo was sealed away in the palace. Since it got out, that must mean there's a way in. If you harness the power of the mana seed, you might even get your memories back, little one. What? Why didn't you say so earlier? I'll go there right now. You can't go alone. The palace was buried long ago. Who knows how many monsters are infesting that place now? You, you managed to defeat Tropicalo. Would you be so kind as to accompany this sprite to the palace? You, you managed to defeat Tropicalo. Would you be so kind as to accompany this sprite to the palace? Uh, sure. Why not? You seem Good nice. Luck. Did you hear that? Now, be sure to listen to everything he says and don't give him any lessons. What luck? Did you hear? Oh, okay, so. Okie dokie. Just don't get in my way, okay? Bro. Bro. Bro? Uh, I have a name. It's Randy. What will you call this little sprite? A poi? Pop, whatever. So, again, just gonna leave it as is. A... <laughs> the innocence of a child, whenever I was playing this game as a kid, for whatever reason, I felt like their name should have been Zelda. So, in a lot of my older playthroughs that I see, the character is named Zelda. Not very fitting. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yes! Good luck! You can go straight to the palace using that hole over there. But be careful! That witch from the north, LNA, sealed the palace off with a cave of magma. First, you have to go to Alanae's castle to ask her to dissolve her seal. You know, she wasn't always like this. Her name used to be a good witch. Go north to her castle in Haunted Forest and ask her to open the seal. Here is the set of bow and arrows we found when the little one washed up. Take them. Chobin's bow. That reminds me. Watts the blacksmith was looking for you. You should stop by his workshop. Oh, nice. So this is the hole they must be talking about for the underground palace. Let's see. Yeah, I'm getting through there. Huh? What's this, this crystal orb for? What do we do with it? The witch in the north used it to seal off this place. That's what the old man told me anyway. Yes, you need her help to break it. So there we go. If Prim had been a little bit more patient, we'd all be going there together. Mighty special. It 
may be compact, but you could smash a boulder with it. Wanna buy it? Take it with you for 100 TP. Which is unfortunate because the axe is mandatory, so you have to buy it. There are more mana weapons out there. Bring them here, and I can reforge them using any orb you find. show you my special shortcut so you can come here directly. I've been waiting. Which weapon is ready for reforging? Okay, so now Watt has completely opened up for us and we can start using the orbs that we have found to upgrade these weapons. So as you can see with the rapier, cannot forge. There, we don't have another orb to spend here. Uh, cannot forge with the axe. The spear, however, can go to level two. So we'll go ahead and tell him to proceed with this. Yep. And then turned into the heavy spear does a little bit more damage so on and so forth Jordan's bow can't forge and then puppy here is using the boomerang currently I probably will change that I don't know yet so now while we're here there are some items that I do want to purchase before we leave here because I don't anticipate coming down here very often so we'll go ahead and we'll We'll do our purchases uh, for the mandatory items and such. Welcome. What will it be? We're going to be buying today, sir. So the first thing that we're going to buy is let's see here. Now I wonder because if it's not if she, if Prim's not with me, there should be a hair ribbon down here. So we got the power of Amprace. That's the next item. We'll go ahead and we'll purchase this. All right, so we bought two of those. The miner robe. Right there. I'm pretty sure that's what Puppy's wearing right now. We'll go ahead and buy it. And the headgear which is going to be an increase. If you look down at the characters on the bottom of the screen, you can see those blue arrows going upwards. This signifies that it's actually a actual upgrade for that character. So, the rabbi cap, perfect. So we'll go ahead and we'll purchase that. And the headgear, we'll go ahead and purchase that. I'm just looking through my list here, seeing if there's anything else. Uh, the wrist brand. All right. So let's see. For Randy, we got the helm. So yes, defense is gonna go up by five, and magic defense by five. Of course, we will take that. With his torso. What is this? The Kung Fu suit. That's nothing we can equip. Uh, so we don't need the Kung Fu suit. Alright. And then, yeah, Poppy was already wearing the minor robe, so we were good there. Uh, let's see. The Power of Embrace. So, 4 defense, 15 evade, magic defense up by 7. Perfect. Okay. We're gonna switch characters here. So Poppy isn't wearing anything on her head right now. Uh, let's see. Defense, evade. Yes. All great. Minor robe. Can't equip. Then for the vampires, also a big upgrade there. So we'll go ahead and equip that as well. So what I'm gonna do here. Welcome. What will it be? gonna go through because we don't have to hold any of this we can go ahead and sell it to try to make a little bit of our gold back 
Anything else? Yes. So we're going to go ahead and we got the elbow pads and the wristband. So they're by the wristband in Pandora, but honestly, don't think that matters. At least that's how I wrote it out. Uh, we're not going to go back to Pandora right now. Uh, apparently I should have bought some of the stuff over there. Gonna buy that, yes. Uh, let's see. And we're going to go ahead and buy the elbow pad so we can have that. I'll leave that. Just make sure that they are in the inventory. That way we are clear. Wristband. Elbow pad. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So we're going to... Go ahead and sell those items. As long as the items are in your inventory at one point or another, you are in great shape. Anything else? So that should that concludes this area for now. We are done here. In the next episode, we will be heading over to the haunted forest to deal with the witch Eleni. Oh, we're not stopping. We are just going to rest. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will be continuing on in the next episode so until then i guess i will pull you later